All right, so we have a uh, Arduino controlled Fox now. And what we're using is pin 11 and the tone function. And we're running that out of pin 11 to this jumper that goes to this 470 microfarad capacitor. And then that runs to a stereo cable and, a, and the ground is connected to ground so for audio and that gives us the electrical path to the Arduino and uh, we're using 145.010 and I'm receiving it up here on this radio and we're transmitting it one watt from the UV5R and this is kind of a less expensive way to make a uh, Fox transmitter of course the UV5R goes down to one watt on low power and five, four or five watts on high power. Um, I can't remember from the data sheet. So uh, we're gonna do a little bit of uh, typing and calculations to uh, let you know how this thing might perform in a uh, Fox box in comparison to the Raspberry Pi controlled Fox box that I built previously. So this is a little bit less expensive because this is all you need in the box itself. Um, you can do everything else through the Arduino IDE, you program it, and of course you'll have a power supply and then any connectors inside of the box you might want. All right guys, so we're gonna look at the code for my Fox box, um, the Arduino. And uh, if you start out at w1rcp.com, you can find the Arduino sketch linked right here from my Google Drive. And you have a PDF of this image right here that shows the wiring diagram and of course a short post because this picture hopefully sums everything up. I am going to explain the code. And so we're gonna start with the comments. Um, this is released under the Creative Commons Attribution 4.0 International License. Um, this is the formula for how I came up with the, the CW code speed. And these are the variables that you can change to make this your own. The most important one, though, is the call, which is on line 26. So let's go through this. No F5, um, and F5 is 698.5 hertz. So I just made it a round number. Um, this is 698, which is pretty close to the 700 hertz side tone that I use. Um, the next one is audio out. I use pin 11 as the uh, output for audio. I think you can choose any pulse width modulation. Edit these to make it your own. Your call would be your call. Fox Day is uh, basically just the identification. This is Fox Day W1RCP or Fox from W1RCP. This is your taunting text message from your Fox. For those that do know Morse code, of course, they would be able to hear it and maybe get a chuckle out of it. This is the Fox, come get me with an equal sign. Then we concatenate them into an identification string. So text one plus the call. So that'd be Fox Day, your call. And then the text final is an identification with your taunting text and another identification. The next couple of lines, the only one that you really need to change is digital speed value is in words per minute. The rest of this is just mathematically computed from the ARRL publication, um, which uses a standard code speed for Paris and a 50 unit standard. So 50 units, dots and dashes per minute. That's where they get the 1.2 seconds. And then of course you take however many characters you want that gives you your dit speed. So we take U is 1200 divided by your digital uh, speed value. And uh, that is in milliseconds. So then of course we have a dit is just the value in milliseconds. A da is three times that value. A space is one, and you can change that. If you want a longer space, go with it. I like longer spaces, um, and you'll see in a function in just a minute, there's a word pause that I use that's actually five spaces. This integer is for the length of your string. So whatever you type up here, you don't have to worry about it. You don't even have to worry if it's in uppercase or lowercase. Um, all of that is gonna be handled. Finally, this unsigned long is your wait time. This is three minutes, which is three times 60 seconds times 1000 to convert it into milliseconds. You can make that whatever time you want for your Fox. If you want it to be quiet for a really long time, you make this number larger. If you want it to have a, a shorter interval, 
you could uh, make that two minutes or one minute or you know whatever whatever you want to do for your fox. Nothing should need to be modified below this point. These are uh, the functions for the dots and the dashes in the word space, the word pause. Uh, of course, you have the tone function is just the pin number for your audio out. Your uh, pitch, which is 698, which is note F5, and that's in hertz. And then your delay right here. How long do you want that tone to play? So in this case, I use this delay, dit, for both that, and then you put another delay at the end. This actually doesn't delay. If you didn't have any delays, it would just run all over it. So make sure these are the same value. And then you have no audio out, and then you have another delay between each symbol. The dash is the same way. You have a word pause. Then these are just the alphabet numbers and symbols. You can add more if you want to use them. I only have an equals and a period. Um, I have all of the letters and of course it calls these functions to make the dots and dashes for each one. And then this function check character is to check the characters in your string and compare them and uh, then it calls the respective function to make the audio. So it calls up here to the letter which calls your dots and dashes. Finally we get down here and we go to void setup Pin mode, I don't know if you need this or not for this particular tone function. I think that the compiler handles all that for you. I put it there just in case. Um, text final dot to uppercase converts whatever you have up here to uppercase, val uh, uppercase letters. So again, you don't have to worry about it. And basically the uppercase is just so I could keep this a little bit smaller instead of having to use both letters. I just have uppercase letters. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Um, the length is text.final or textfinal.length function gives that length in uh, an integer of some sort. And then in void loop, which just loops forever until you remove power, we have an integer i starts at zero, which is at the beginning of the string. Um, and then we're just using that string like an array. And you go until you're one smaller than the length because zero really is the first position. So that length of it, you don't want to go to the length because then it might be a null and it might act weird. And then we increment through every single letter one at a time. It checks the character in this function. So it compares these letters down here to these cases and calls the function that's needed to send that letter and then um, you have a delay for another space just to get a little extra time between each of those symbols and characters and uh, after it's done going through that uh, string it goes down here and it does your wait time and then after that wait time is over it just starts all over again and sends it so it will start back at zero and send it so really once you have this configured you don't really have to go any more into this program then you just upload it to your arduino and you're ready to go with your circuit so you'll build the circuit as you see inside of here so you follow this you connect your ground to the sleeve of your uh, audio connector pin 11 is your audio out you connect that to the anode of your uh, capacitor and the cathode, the negative end, is connected to the ring. The tip is not used uh, for this particular circuit. You only have to connect these two, and that plugs into the 8th inch jack on your UV5R or your TYT. I think they all use the same plug, and you just use Vox. So this is a very simple wiring diagram. And then you plug in your USB into this port here, your USB port on your Arduino, and you use the other end of the USB to plug it into just a portable power supply for five volts that you would use to charge a phone. So that is it. And through the magic of editing, we removed all the mistakes. Hope you give this a like and a subscribe and uh, you share what you've built with it. I'd like to see what you actually contain all of this in in your Fox box. So there are some uh, some uh, cool ways to do that ammo cans you've got plastic boxes some people might put it in a tupperware container um, plastic container a rubber made container whatever you might want to call it so i want to see some of that i'll even post it on here if you uh, want to share it thank you guys and have a great one